G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and today I want to have a little bit of a chat about mangoes. We're in the middle of summer here, it's been raining for about two weeks so you're going to see some footage of my grass that's about two foot long because I haven't been able to mow the lawn. But amongst that grass I'm going to show you a lot of our mango trees, about ten of them or so, that are in, fu in fruit. A lot of them are quite small, the trees. Uh, but the fruit is starting to ripen and so I thought it'd be a good time to do a video on mangoes and mangoes only and just give you a few growing tips and show you well how I grow them. When I first started growing mangoes we had a Kensington Pride or a Bowen mango tree in our yard already. That one tree didn't produce a mango hardly at all for about the first five years because it was getting diseases like anthracnose, a fungal disease that prevented even the fruit from being formed. It would blacken off the flowers, the fruit wasn't able to form, hence you'd get no fruit off the tree. So how was I supposed to solve this? Well of course I did some research and found a pretty simple solution. It was to spray the tree with a fungicide that would then prevent the anthracnose or black spot from developing. Well I did this for a bit and it was moderately successful. And then I started to get fed up with spraying the trees with a fungicide because I don't like to spray my trees or my vegetables with anything or use any of those type of chemicals in the garden. I like to organically grow things. So I switched away from that and I didn't get any mangoes for a while. Then I decided to cut the tree right back to virtually bones and I mean I severely cut the tree. This is the one here I'm standing under. I severely cut the, cut it back uh, and over the next couple of years it grew back and it grew stronger and a lot of the disease that I had pruned had gone plus because of the extra airflow around the tree the fungus wasn't uh, as prolific so now we're getting quite good harvest for the last couple of years out of the tree and I realized that it wasn't just uh, using using fungicides or chemicals that was doing the trick you can organically grow good mangoes without the need for pesticides or fungicides the other thing you can do is not grow trees like this one I inherited this tree the rest of the mango trees that I've planted in the garden bar probably two are known varieties with a resistance to black spot or anthracnose and this is very important and I would suggest that anyone growing mangoes in an area where they can be subjected to these fungal type diseases to grow those varieties better resistant to these type of diseases. The problem with the store varieties and the problem I have with the store variety mangoes is that they generally come from a long way away. At the start of our mango season here we start getting mangoes from northern Australia because the season kicks in earlier. So they have to travel up to 3,000 kilometres to get to our region. Before they're put on the shop shelf, they're dipped in a fungicide and a pesticide mixture to ensure that they don't carry disease or pests interstate or from region to region. And uh, that's a drama for me because I don't like eating anything sprayed or dipped in chemicals if I don't have to. People get wrapped around the axles with how good the fruit looks. And they don't realise that for fruit to look so great on the shop shelf, often it's been sprayed with chemicals. And it's not always the best tasting fruit either. It's the one that's got the best lasting time or the best way to travel. And they're often picked extra green so that they can ripen in time to hit the market and uh, not rot in transit. And that's why I like to grow my own mangoes because I don't really care how the outside looks. That's what the beauty is about growing your own fruit and vegetables at home. You don't have to market it, you don't have to sell it. You can love it even if it's ugly because I can tell you an ugly looking mango still tastes fantastic. When we pick one off the tree and I cut it open upstairs I'll show you you can have a mango that looks ordinary on the outside but it still looks terrific on the inside and will taste fantastic. Many mangoes will propagate fine by seed 
If you find that there's a really excellent variety that someone's growing and it tends to be laden with fruit, grab a seed from one of them and propagate it yourself. If you can find a mango that's growing well, you might be lucky enough to be able to propagate it and find that it's true to type from seed and uh, voila, you've got an excellent variety of mango that keeps coming back every year. The other thing is, of course, is to grow mango varieties that you know is, has good resistance to anthracnose and fungus diseases. I grow varieties like the Kwan, Glen, the Nam Doc Mai, which is an excellent Asian variety. The R2E2 isn't too bad. And there are a few, few others. Just do your research. I mean, mango varieties differ from country to country. And you, you'll find that wherever you are, you'll be able to, if you're in a mango area that can be grown, which is the tropics or subtropics, and in some places, temperate climates, you'll find that you'll be able to find varieties that are quite disease resistant and taste really great. All right, well, let me pick a few mangoes and then we'll go upstairs and I'll cut one on and, and show you what it's like to eat. Here's some of the mangoes that I've collected. This one here on the plate, it's right to eat. This is a Kwan type variety. It's a little smaller than most varieties, but it's a really good tasting mango and you can see this has got the standard blemishes that a home grown mango has it's got tinges of black spot around the the base of the or the stem side of the mango it's got blemishes all over it and of course wouldn't be sold very well at the shops but Believe you me, inside, which I've just courted, is absolutely fantastic. It smells amazing, and it's as good as any mango you would get in the store, of course. So this much worth of mango is about $2 in the store and it's got a few weak spots in it, a few little rot spots. This one here, I mean you could eat that but you know I'm going to cut it out. And now I'm left with this wonderful mango. slice along the skeleton of the seed everyone loves to get their hands dirty when they're eating mangoes and along the sides and of course give this to the kids or chew it off yourself and you've got all this magnificent flesh to eat. Mm. It's not stringy. Remember this is the Kwan variety. There's one that's quite similar. It's called the Nam Doc Mai. It's another Asian variety. Just amazing. Growing easily at home. This is a Glen variety and you can see how it's got some severe black spot at the base. Sometimes it's caused by the sap coming out when it's picked but in this case it, it just developed on the tree. And most of my mangoes will develop some type of blemish. I don't spray of course like I said for disease, I don't spray, spray for pests. I just let these ripen naturally on the tree and sometimes I pick them a little early so they ripen off the tree. But all that you do with something as beautiful as this is cut off the bad bit and then you've got this, all this beautiful Glen Mango to, to eat. 
and it's not always bad. Here's one that I've picked that doesn't have any blemishes. See how the beak has started to thicken out? That's a good sign when you're picking a mango that's not quite ripe. Look for the beak, the end, the bottom of the mango. If it's got a really sharp beak, well then it's not ripe yet or not ready to pick for ripening. But if the beak has filled out, then and the shoulders of the mango is quite full, well then you know that you can pick this and in a few days this will ripen beautifully. This is a quite a large mango for a glen. Usually the glens are about a three quarters of this size, but we've had quite a lot of rain lately and they've really swelled nicely. These are, are more quans. This one here's got some uh, fungus or, or a rot spot developing. Again, I'll just cut this off. The whole point about it is why pay up to five dollars for a mango in the store about this size four to five dollars just because it's beautiful and pink and rosy and got the right color about it but dipped in pesticide and fungicide why pay for that and eat that when you can grow them at home Well, I hope you enjoyed that little video on growing mangoes here in the subtropics. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them down below or get to our forum, selfsufficientculture.com. See some of the images there that I've put online and get into a discussion about mangoes if you want. Don't forget about my website, selfsufficientme.com. And uh, I hope you pop in there and make a few comments or read a few of our articles. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.